One of the things I've always enjoyed doing is playing with light. I think it is it's vitally important with the picture because you can help to hold the viewer's attention on the subject matter in your picture by just subtly adding some light and effect to the picture. I've done a fair bit of it in Photoshop CS. This time though, I thought to take a look and see how we can do it using Photoshop Elements. Right, to make a start, this is the image I've selected. It's a freshly fallen apple. Well take somebody's word for it, it's freshly fallen, wasn't going to try it at the time, but it looked nice and fresh. First thing in the morning, we've got these blades of grass coming over, little dew drops on them as well, and I thought it looked good. But the lighting was about, you know, perhaps just a little bit too good, because you've got a lot of clutter around the side of the picture, and the viewer's attention, once they've looked here, can begin to wander off around these uh, various areas. So, using lighting, we can help to hold the viewer's attention on the part of the picture that matters the most. Let's take a look at doing just that. First of all, we're going to start off the darkening process by coming to the Layers panel. We're going to use Command J or Control J, which will simply duplicate the background layer. How quick and easy was that? Next, to darken this layer when down, we're going to use Blend Modes. We're going to come where it says Normal, clicking down, we're going to drop down and we're going to select Multiply. That's a good darkening uh, blend mode, so select and Multiply. You'll notice the picture's darkened right down, perhaps just a little bit too much. But now using the Opacity, I'm simply going to click down and move this across to the left. Well, I can only go in one direction, I suppose, but dropping down the Opacity to something in that area there. What have we got? We've got 44. That looks pretty good. We can switch it on and off and you can see that's the before, that's the after. Right, for the next stage, what we're going to do is we're going to come across, we're going to pick up the elliptical marquee tool, there it is there, we're going to make a selection around our picture, something like this. Now the elliptical marquee tool I'm using is the single selection one, that's this one here, the new selection. This allows me to come in, I can reposition it, but I'm not going to worry too much about that because there's a little bit of magic we can do with this just a bit later on. But that's positioned our selection. We're now going to come to the bottom of the layer stack to this little half black, half white icon here, which is the create new fill or adjustment layer. And we're going to drop down. You can't unfortunately see it, but it is hue saturation is the direction I'm heading in. And if we just take a look, you will notice it has added a hue saturation adjustment layer. And that white area there is the area that we've actually got selected. Right, let's come to the adjustments. With the adjustments, dropping straight down, hue, saturation, lightness is the third one down here. We're going to drop down as we move it across. You'll notice the apple darkening down even more. Going to move it across to that area there would be pretty good. You'll also notice a hard edge. I didn't feather the selection. If we come back to the layers panel, Looking at the mask there, what we need to do with this mask is we need to invert the mask. So in other words, we need to sort of put the darkness here that we've created on the outside and keeping it light on the inside. Now we can do that by simply using the shortcut, which is Control i on a PC, that's Control and i or Command i on a Mac. There it is, Command i on a Mac. Job done. Right, the hard edge. I didn't feather it. Why didn't I feather it? Because how much do you actually feather something by? Well, there's a great little sort of shortcut. If you're using a mask like this, all you need to do now is go to Filter, Blur. We're going to go to Gaussian Blur or Gaussian Blur. Call it what you will. Provide you call it something, I suppose. Drag in the cursor out. You can see I'm just going to click on the edge there. That is now showing us. And we've got the preview ticked as well. Let's move this to the side so we can see what's going on. That's got the radius as 0 0.1 pixel. If we move this up to say 2.6, you'll notice it's beginning to soften off there. The more we take this up, the more we are feathering that edge by. Let's just whack it right the way up to that sort of area. You'll notice it dropping out completely there. Let's go, just go back. There's the hard edge. Come back to this. There it is. Nice soft edge. That looks pretty good where it is. So I'm going to click OK to that. Right, there's a bit of magic we can do with the mask. Pick up the Move tool. You can actually use the Move tool now and you can reposition the mask wherever you like. 
you'll notice if I move and drop it, it's sort of taking the position there in the layers panel as well. And there's more. If you go to image, transform, free transform, command T or control T is the shortcut for that. If I just zoom out a little bit, we can come in, we can grab hold of the transform tool, we can sort of change the position of the transform tool. This really is fantastic. I love using this method. Bringing it out like this, we can reposition it, you can change the shape of it, you can do whatever you want to do with it. It really is, it's a great way of working. So coming into something like that and just trying to do a little bit of lighting on the bottom there and bringing it in on the side like that because I don't want to see the clutter in the background there or in the top corner like that. Like that, click the tick, press enter or return on the keyboard which will apply the transform job done. I'm using command zero, control zero to go to fit on screen. Looking pretty good so far. Let's just take a look at this, switching it on and off. You can see the difference that's made to the image. Working nicely so far. I'd like to see these uh, little dewdrops here in the light and perhaps add just a little bit more around this area. Happy with the rest of it. Yeah, I know there's always one. Not happy with some things <laughs> coming through though. To take a look at this, we're simply going to use Black is the foreground colour, because don't forget, black is what's revealing, white is concealing there. So we're going to pick up the uh, gradient tool, my favourite tool of all. We're going to come up, we're going to choose the radial gradient, that's this one here. Clicking on edit, making sure we have got the foreground to transparent. That is important, otherwise it will not work if you're using foreground to background. That's not going to work. It has to be foreground to transparent. Click OK to that. Right, the opacity. Normally it is set to 100. That's a bit strong. We want to have a little bit of, you know, if you do this you're going to blitz it at 100% and it's not going to look particularly good. Try pressing 4 on the keyboard. That'll reduce it to 40%. If you press 4, 5 in quick succession, it'll give you 45% or if you keep use 2, 5, 25%, 0 will give you 100%. That just gives you a little bit more of an option. We can come in now and I'm just going to come across this area just pulling it out just very very sort of shallow little strokes there just to bring the lighting in on that area and because I've come in at the 40% it allows me to go over it several times rather than coming in in one go. Let's do the same down here just coming through just bringing through the lighting on that one leaf there because I like the way that's coming in You'll notice that little black spot coming through there on the mask. That's what we're working on. So it's just a great way of working. Coming through, perhaps a little bit more brightness on that little drop there, because I'm feeling sorry for that drop. And there it is. Looking at the rest of it, if I just switch it on and off, you can see how it's affecting the rest of the image. That looks pretty good there. You can even, if I press X on the keyboard, so white is now the foreground color, I can even make this one little blade there just a little bit darker coming through let's just drop that down like that so just remove the emphasis on that one little blade there you'll notice as well the way you got the white now going through the mask I'll tell you what let me show you the mask there it is so that's that blade of grass I just pressed alt or option because I know you're dying to ask me how did I do that press alt or option click on the mask you can see it you can even work live on the mask as well so for example if I put black in there there it is and you can see what a lovely soft transition the gradient tool uses right to pop it back just click on the little eye icon and there it is. We can take it a stage further. We're working in layers. We've got a huge amount of possibilities. Now, for example, if I wanted to give just a bit more lighting on the apple itself, we could drop down to layer one. We could put in a layer mask. This is in elements nine. So we've popped in the layer mask, got black as our foreground color. I've got my gradient tool, my radial gradient using foreground to transparent. Don't forget the opacity is 40%, which is just about perfect. We can come up, we can add just a bit more light and just revealing the image underneath around that area. And there it is. Save this as a PSD file. In other words, go to File, go to Save As, and make sure you save it as a Photoshop format picture there. So make sure it's a Photoshop format picture, which will save it in layers. Click Save to that, and there it is. 
job done. Go on, give it a try. It really does work a treat. And if you're wondering about the layout that I've got here for my Photoshop elements, yes, I can't help but tinker with it. Check out my website. You'll find a video on setting up for, uh, Photoshop elements as we've got here as well. So until the next time, it's happy imaging and take care.